Hey guys, this is Kendall Terry, and this is uh, part one of Animal Structure and Function. Um, and I've got an interesting question up here to start us off. Which is, better, which is the better utensil, a spoon or a fork? Uh, you might have a personal preference there, but probably the response would be, well, it depends on what you're trying to do. If I'm trying to eat soup, obviously the fork probably isn't the best option. Uh, but if I'm trying to uh, eat something maybe like a piece of steak, uh, the spoon is probably not going to be the thing that really benefits you. Maybe a salad, the spoon also probably not going to be the thing you want to go with. The fork actually performs the better function. And really what we're talking about here is the difference between the form, okay, the shape, and the function, what it does. In anatomy, it's, uh, we look at the study of the structure of the organism. Okay, that's why it looks the way it does, uh, so on and so forth. Whereas in physiology, we study the functions that the organism actually performs. So here we study what it looks like. Here we study what it does. Okay, so you got the difference. So if you've got the spoon and the fork, what it looks like is going to dictate what it does. And we see the same thing happen in nature. What it looks like dictates what it does. And that's what we're going to be looking at uh, in this unit. Uh, so we go back to the very basic uh, beginning here of cells. A group of cells come together uh, to make tissues. Tissues work together to make organs. Organs work together to make organ systems. Eventually, organ systems all work together to make the organism. We're going to start here. We've done a lot of stuff on cells. So we're going to start here with tissues, and we're going to kind of build through the next uh, couple chapters. So we've got tissues or a group of cells with a common structure and function. So you've got cells coming together. There's commonality among those cells. They work together, and in working together, they perform a similar function. We primarily look at four uh, tissues. That's what we're going to look at today. We're going to focus today's lecture on that. Um, and the first type is epithelial tissues. In epithelial tissues, we've got six examples here. Uh, we're going to be working on some of these in class with some projects and stuff as well. This first type is called a pseudostratified ciliated columnar uh, tissue. Now, for these, you can see they, they're, they're columns, but they're not uh, just straight up, okay, which is where you get the pseudostratified, um, stratified being several stacks. This looks like multiple layers, but it's actually not multiple layers. It's just one cell that goes all the way to the top, and they're attached to then this basal membrane, and you can see this basal membrane on several of these, uh, or, uh, of these tissues. You see these primarily in like the nasal passageways um, is where you'll find these types of cells in us. The next type of epithelial cell, simple squamous. Okay, you can see just one layer of cell. And you see this in blood vessels, air sacs. These are the linings of those airways that, or those, those places that uh, nutrients need to pass from one side to the other very easily. So you'll see it in blood vessels where they need to pass oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients. Uh, air sacs, which are needing to pass that oxygen carbon dioxide. So uh, not a very thick uh, border, but enough that there is a separation, but stuff can be passed easily and quickly. Then we've got stratified squamous. So stratified meaning several layers, squamous meaning uh, simple there. And uh, you get, this is like in our skin and our esophagus. These are areas that are uh, scraped. So there's several layers there uh, to get down to really the, the meat of what it is. So you got a protection there, um, but it's still uh, not very complex necessarily in looking at it. Down here we have simple cuboidal. Of course, you can see uh, it's circular, uh, and you see this with like the thyroid gland and some other glands in the body where they're secreting into a space, and then what's secreted in that space will be sent to other areas in the body. Finally, uh, well, sorry, not finally. Down here we have stratified columnar. We've got column cells and then stratified meaning layers uh, on top of layers and then the basal membrane down here at the bottom and this is uh, things like the urethra uh, a very long uh, trip that has to be made there protected well uh, for the body. And then finally we have simple columnar those just column cells on top of that basal membrane and that is stuff like your intestines that way you get food from the intestinal tract into the blood supply, 
but there's a passage way to go that protects the organism, and that way stuff can't just go in and out of your blood supply. That would be bad. The next type of tissue is connective tissue. I've got six different types on here as well. Um, up here we've got bone. Many people don't think of bone tissue being connective, but if you think about it, it does connect up your whole entire body uh, with those um, that skeletal system. Brooke Everett, can you call Miss Tucker in the main office? Brooke Everett, call Miss Tucker in the main office. It's five six two one zero four. Thank you. So with the bone here, we have these circular patterns. This is called an osteon. And that bone will be made up of several of these, and that's why I've got kind of ringed edges there. But you'll have these cells that will harden uh, into that cal because of that calcium. And it'll harden, gives it that hard, rigid structure that the bone makes. But there is some pliability there, so it's not brittle uh, because of the space and different things that's in there. So the bone, connective tissue. Uh, another is adipose. Many times we don't think of adipose being connective either. But adipose tissue are these cells that have these huge fat droplet storage areas that store all that fat um, in your body. Uh, some of which is very good that you need, uh, but as Americans we seem to have a little bit extra a lot of times. Uh, another type of connective tissue, blood, very important, that connects up uh, various areas of the body from head to toe. In that you'll have the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and then the platelets. Crisis team meeting at 345 in the library right now. All of those who are on the crisis team, there will be a meeting up in the library at 345 at this time. Thank you. All of these components go to make up the blood, and all of them are very important to the communication from head to toe that go on. Uh, loose connective tissue. I've got like packing material here because this is a lot of the space in between a lot of the different things in the body. Um, loosely uh, cells put in there, other things in there that just help hold stuff together, transport stuff from one area to another, cushion areas. Uh, there's a lot of different functions that this plays. Loose connective tissue. Fibrous connective tissue, these long strands of cells. This is what you see in the tendons and ligaments. And then cartilage. Cartilage is, is very similar to the bone style, but it's not got those hardened rings. It does have those, that, those cells in there that could um, look like they're hardening, which in some areas as a baby you're born with cartilage, and those will harden into bones as you develop. So uh, a strong connection here between these two, but the cartilage also is there for cushioning in between joints and stuff like that. Uh, so there is some space around those uh, cells for that. Then we have the nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is very simple. We've got the neuron, which is the nerve cell. The neuron has a body with a nucleus, dendrites around the edge up here that will receive signals, and then an axon that will transmit that signal to then something over here. And usually it releases some kind of neurotransmitter here that will then be picked up by another cell. It may be a nerve cell. It may be uh, an, another cell like a muscle cell that does a function, whatever may be the case. Uh, very simple. There's um, not a lot of detail with this. We'll go into the nervous system in a little bit later. Um, and then finally we have muscle tissue. In muscle tissue we have three different types. Sorry, I've just uh, erased a little bit of a word there. Um, but the first two are called uh, striated. In striated we have skeletal muscle and it's just these strips of cells that have these stripes. See these stripes that go through here the, this way? And under a microscope then that makes them look striped and that's where they get the name striated. And they all work together. Okay, They link together uh, so that they, they'll contract those muscles and these are voluntary. Um, over here then we have involuntary cardiac muscles. Now the cardiac muscles are forked and they'll be connected with these called inter intercalated discs. And these intercalated discs will cause when one reacts, they all will have to react together. And that way you get that strong heart beat uh, to get that blood everywhere it needs to go. This is a, an example of an uh, involuntary muscle. And then we have smooth muscle. Now notice smooth muscle does not have the, uh, the striations or the intercalated discs. Um, but they all work together and they are involuntarily controlled. Uh, and you'll see uh, the smooth muscle in areas of the body uh, like digestion, 
Um, once that food, once you swallow that food manually, it will be picked up and pushed through the rest of your digestive tract involuntary. Uh, you don't have to think about that, which is good that we don't have to think about doing all of that. Um, and those cells that govern those muscles are different than the cells like, for instance, in your bicep that you're, you're thinking about moving that arm up and down uh, in that fashion. So there are four uh, types of tissue um, in, the, in the body that you need to make sure you review uh, as we go through this.